Hello, my name is Cassandra Michelle, and I'm a student in the Curriculum Development in Multi-Age Classroom, EDMM 527. Today, I will talk to you about a curriculum theorist named Ralph W. Tyler. Now, he was born 1902 to 1994. He was considered the father of the behavioral objective, a concept he frequently used in asserting learning to be a process through which a person attains new patterns of behavior. The objectives that I will talk to you today is Ralph Tyler's contributions, Ralph Tyler model, evaluation and assessment. Ralph Tyler was born April 22, 1902 in Chicago, Illinois. He was the sixth child born of eight children. Ralph Tyler grew up in Nebraska to a professional family. His maternal grandfather was in the Civil War and had been appointed as a judge in Washington by President Ulysses S. Grant. His father was raised in a farm, then became a doctor. As Tyler grew up, he went to college and received his bachelor's degree in 1921 from Doyne College in Crete, Nebraska. He later received his master's degree from the University of Nebraska in 1923, and he received his doctorate from the University of Chicago in 1927. In his doctoral degree, his research was emphasized in the use of statistics in testing. Tyler began generating the rationale. He began to take his paper and pen and begin to write, writing about curriculum, how to improve the curriculum. And this all happened during the Great Depression when America was suffering. Education were being questioned. A lot of the assessments um, were questioning. Schools were implementing outdated curriculum. Tyler wanted to have a strong curriculum, he wanted to have one in place, and therefore he began to work in the area of curricula. The eight-year study model took place 1933 to 1941, and it was a study of a longitudinal analysis of 30 schools. It looked at the opportunities available for young people who, who stayed in school rather than joining the workforce during the Depression. Now, this study is also credited with establishing the importance of evaluation in designing and implementing curricula. Analyzing data from the eight-year study, Tyler found that graduates of the 30 secondary schools did as well in college as those who entered after standardized tests. He also found that success in college could be predicted by competence in writing, reading, and just one high school subject. So mathematical ability, it appeared, correlated with the success only in engineering and technical institutions. So there was a man named James Bryant Conant. He was the, he was the Harvard's president from 1933 to 1953. He persuaded the College Entrance Examination Board to reformulate its main aptitude test so that the test would be independent of any particular curriculum. Today, it's called the SATs. The SATs is a test designed for students of grade 12. And in this test, they were to take reading and writing and usually answer questions regarding per minute, a minute to answer these questions. And this really started after World War II, where SATs were emphasized overall the study of students to do well. Tyler's famous book is well known. It describes his philosophy. It specifies the four basic principles. Now, this book was a bestseller and has since been reprinted in 36 editions, shaping curriculum and instructional design to this day. This book is a simple structure for delivering and evaluating instruction consisting of the four parts, the Tyler. 
Ralph Tyler model, the four basic principles, determine the school's purposes, also known as objectives. This is defining appropriate learning objectives. The second model, identify educational experiences related to purpose. This is introducing useful learning experiences. The third model, organize the experiences. This is organizing experiences to maximize the effect. And the fourth and last model is evaluate the purpose. This is evaluating the process and revising the areas that were not effective. Ralph Tyler founded the following, Advanced Study in Behavioral Sciences. And this took place in 1954. He founded and directed this, this facility and held that position through 1967. The center was originally envisioned as a five-year project, but later became an ongoing independent institution that would eventually claim to have supported over 2,000 leading scientists and scholars. As a member of the governing board, Tyler is credited with playing a critical role in determining the character of the center of, as a new type of educational institution. Now, he also developed the National Assessment Educational Progress, NAEP. Now, the NAEP first test covered citizenship, writing, and science in 1969, followed by assessments in reading, literature, music, and functional literacy in 1970 and 1971. Now, all of this development took place, and Tyler really wanted students to excel. So, therefore, he would continue to write tests um, and assessments to see where students were progressing, especially in the area of social studies, mathematics. These things were developed to help students during the NAEP assessment test. And also... The System Development Foundation, he became president of the system of this foundation, which supported basic research in information sciences. Tyler served as an educational advisor to the following six U.S. presidents, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, Dwight D. Eisenhower. John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard M. Nixon, and Jimmy Carter. Now, Tyler wanted to be a teacher. He always knew he wanted to be a teacher. At the age of 12 years old, he worked in a creamery where he was working with cans and working with different things. But he also um, had, had a teaching position as a science teacher. And he really knew he wanted to be a teacher. He had an experience where there were a group of men who um, were walking towards him angrily. And as they approached him, they said, well, we want to fight you. And Tyler said, well, no, only one of you can really fight me and beat me up. But why do you want to fight me? And they, the young men, one of them said, well, you want us to come to school to learn, but we are not interested in coming to school to learn, but we want to play football. So then Tyler began to see that students wanted to come to school, but they wanted to come to school to play football, but learning had to take place. So he wanted the students to have a learning experience inside the classroom and outside of the classroom. Tyler worked to improve curricula. That was his goal. He wanted the curriculum to improve for teachers and for students and for working professionals who, who cared and took a great, um, who cared and not only cared, but fostered implementing higher education. Tyler retired and lectured everywhere. He retired and traveled 
about 200 air miles so that he can lecture to different facilities, to different universities, especially the University of Massachusetts Amherst, where he lectured to students, to faculty staff on how to improve curricula and improving not just the curricula, but for the whole school to be on one accord. Tyler maintained an active life. He was very active. He kept involving in, you know, lecturing. He traveled. He spoke to various types of different groups. He himself kept himself active. Tyler advised on evaluation curriculum in Ghana, Indonesia, Ireland, Israel, and Sweden. In the multi-age classrooms, Tyler's model is a reflection in the multi-age classrooms. Nurture students' interests, yes. In order for the teacher to understand the students, the teacher is fostering students' interests, gaining information, helping the students to learn. This is important, especially in his step model, step model one, where it talks about determine the school's purpose. So the teacher really wants to engage students learning and, and broaden their horizon. Home and school connection is important because it is important for the teacher to connect to parents and explain the connection of the learning process, what has been learned in school, and how is this being how is it to be trans transformed or translated at home? How are the students able to connect the two? Not just only inside of the school, but also in home. Are parents helping the students? If the parents are working, is there are there guardians available to help these students? to learn and make the connection from home and school. To better the community, it's important to have um, projects that are going on outside of the community, uh, actually going on field trips so that the students, when they learn, for example, about animals, then they are able to go and have a field trip to the zoo where they can see and visually see the animals and relate it to the subjects taught in school and in class. Educational assessments, it's important for teachers to assess students. Um, are students being assessed? Are they being assessed not only verbal or written, but are they, are they able to see visuals? Are they able to see video clips? Are they able to, you know, do a group project? You know, even if they're small children, but they can get into groups of twos or threes and they can talk about what they've learned. So planning and evaluating. Is the teacher planning um, and is the teacher evaluating students on what has taken place, what learning has taken place? Assess instructional plans. Are these plans being instructed? Are these plans, um, are the instructional plans being assessed? Has a teacher sat down to formulate, okay, these are the plans and am I assessing and am I going forward and am I, am I having challenges where what can I learn from this challenge to overcome so that the students can learn and everyone can go on to a higher higher progress can go forward evaluate student learning not just you know the textbooks or reading or field trips or are students actually learning a written test can be given, um, multiple choice tests can be given, a video clip or an essay can be given, all types of um, evaluating students can be done orally or in groups. So all of these things are to take place to improve student learning. The use of technology. Now, is it just the students going to the technology? No. The subjects that were being taught in class, how is it correlated into students using technology so when they go on the computer, they are able to, to access and able to relate to what they have been learning in class. Tyler's evaluation assessment model is useful today. It is to determine the school's purposes. How, how, how are students learning? What has been taking place? So it's defining, you know, the appropriate learning objectives. And usually in this step model, it's usually when are all the objectives being met. Life outside the school. Is there a relationship between, you know, schoolwork and an experience outside of school? Besides a field trip, it, are students able to take a nature walk? And if you're talking about plants or flowers, then 
they can see it in the textbook, they can read it, but they can also have a nature walk where they see the different types of flowers, where they see the different types of plants and are able to identify what they've seen outside of class and in the textbook in school. Subject specialists teach in classrooms. This is very important. Do you, um, are specialists knowledgeable um, and able to relate to students, uh, especially um, in the subject of reading, where students have dyslexia and are not able, you know, to decode different words or different letters or sounds, you know, can a specialist, you know, encourage them to learn to love school while having these different challenges and overcoming them. But also the specialist is not to only cater to special needs or the students that need the help, but cater to the entire classroom. Selecting learning experiences and guiding teaching is to really help teachers guide students and to foster and to motivate learning. Illustrate the characteristics of learning experiences. What have the students learned? What experiences do they have? Um, do they know the prior um, subject? And engage in asking questions and learning. The process of planning a unit organization is really organizing and planning well, helping, helping the teacher to plan and formulate and sit down and thoroughly write out, you know, lesson plans or thematic units or different types of um, educational games that students can learn from. The need for evaluation is important. It's to assess students and to assess the teacher too to be evaluated by other um, peers, by their peers or by the school administrator for the teacher to be an effective and efficient person in the classroom. Using the results of evaluation, once the teacher has been given the results um, that was determined how they were evaluated is, you know, to take it as a positive criticism and work with the negatives and turn them into positives so that there can be a smooth um, learning process for students and for the teacher and the results for of evaluation for students. So once they receive their results, how can they improve? How can they do um, not just do better, but how are students able to succeed by receiving positive criticisms that can help the students achieve towards higher success. And other values and uses of evaluation procedures is evaluating the entire school curriculum, ev evaluating the, the yearly plan, evaluating the thematic unit, evaluating and really understanding what teaching has been in place here. What methods are you using? What materials, what resources are you using in order to help students? Tyler remained optimistic about education. Although there were different challenges, although there are challenges, but he is able to remain optimistic. Educating America, this is his goal. His goal was to educate America, educate young children, um, adults and teenagers and professional working people, you know, about education, about striving towards excellence, about maintaining and, you know, achieving and going towards higher goals. He lived 91 years on earth. He lived a successful life. And Ralph Tyler died February 18, 1994. Yes, he was considered himself to be the father of behavioral objectives, a concept he frequently used in asserting learning to be a process through which a person attains new patterns of behavior.